Hey guys, Mike here at Amish Tutorials and welcome back to a new video. All right, well, today we're going to create a, a responding basketball net, okay? So one that is dynamic and that will actually respond when you drop a ball into it, okay? Cool. So I created this simple board and ring, which is just a couple of straightforward polygons, all right? And next what we're going to do is we're going to create our net. So for that, what I'll do is I'll take a polygon cylinder. We're going to pull that out from our top view. Oh, still got a ball going on there. Get rid of that. From our top view, we're going to hit R, and we're going to scale that up until we're roughly on the midsection of our ring there. And we're not going to go crazy on the poly count for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's going to make our uh, simulation very slow. And second, you know, it's... Uh, well, actually, it's mainly going to make it very slow, okay? And it, it's going to look okay anyway, because we're going to apply an alpha image to it. So we got that. We're going to go into our attribute editor. Let's uh, see. We're going to set caps to zero. And we'll increase the subdivision just a little bit. We'll do 25, okay? We're going to right-click, go to face, select the top face, delete it. Select the bottom face and delete that as well. Then we're going to right click and go to object mode. We're going to hit W. We're going to bring that down until we are just below our ring, like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to our modeling menu. Let's go to uh, Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop Tool, Multiple, and we'll do four. Q on our keyboard. We're going to right click and go to vertex. Let's drag select all of these. Hit R. Scale that in a bit. And hit W and kind of push that up. Scale that in. Scale that in. You get the idea. Okay. All right, so that's our basketball net just now. Now, second issue is how do we get this to look like a net, okay? Right now, it looks more like a uh, something you pour water in, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to right-click at object mode, and we're going to apply a net texture to it. And I'll show you how I created this. Uh, hang on, and we'll jump over to Photoshop. All right, guys, here we are. So I'll show you what I did. Uh, I'll just go back to this image right here and go to edit and step backward. So this is just an image of, uh, well, actually go back one more step. This is just an image of a net texture, okay? Now I save that out, I open that in Photoshop and what I did is I went up to image adjustments and I turned that to a black and white image. That's why this looks so black. And I want to select the black and cut it out and paste it into a new image. So I don't have the white background. I want an alpha image. Okay. So I changed that to black and white. Then I went up to brightness and contrast and tweak it in a way that the net becomes very black and very crisp. And then once you've done that, you'll take your magic wand, click on it, and it should select all the black and go to edit and cut then go to file new okay edit and paste so now you have that net okay now i made the contrast a little bit too big so you got that text going on and the version that i did which was a little bit less contrast you're not going to see that okay so let's go back to maya okay here we are now we didn't uv this guy yet but we're going to apply the material first and i'm going to uv it so I'm going to right click, assign new material, we'll do a Lambert, check the box, file, folder, and on my desktop I saved this guy right here. Okay, now you can see that it's not UV'd because it looks off. So we're going to select this, and we're going to go up to UV, and let's do a cylindrical mapping which actually looks very good. 
So once I click outside of that, we have a perfectly good looking net. Okay, cool. So now let's turn our net into an actual net. So we're going to make it an in-cloth object. We're going to select it. Right click on object mode, select that. We're going to move to our FX menu and go up to end cloth and create end cloth. Now, if I don't do anything else and I just hit play, it's going to fall straight down. Let's go back to frame one. Yeah, there we go. And obviously we don't want that. So with that done, we're going to select our net. We're going to switch views. We're going to right click at a vertex and we're going to drag select that entire top row of vertices. And we're going to go up to end cloth, uh, sorry, to end constraint and to transform constraint. So I kind of glued on these top vertices. So now if I hit play, it's going to stay right where it is. All right. Okay. We're going to hit stop. We're going to go back. Now for the dynamic part, I want to have a ball fall through the hoop and kind of move the net and, you know, respond like it should. Okay, so let's create a ball. We're going to take a sphere, hit W, pull that out, hit R to scale that up. And let's kind of make this roughly the size. Let's do something like that. And hopefully our net is flexible enough. Okay, looks all right. So we got that. And let's quickly give the ball some color. Right click, assign new material, Lambert. And we'll do something nice and bright. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to select our board and our ring. And under end cloth, under FX, end cloth, we're going to create a passive collider. And our ball, we're going to select that, and we're going to go up to Fields and Solvers, and we are going to add Gravity. Okay, so let's see if this worked out for us or not. We're going to have a go. Frame 1, let's hit Play and see what happens. All right. Now, as you can see, it fell through nicely. I'm just looking to see whether the net is responding. And it looks like we're going to create a slightly bigger ball to see if it's responding. Okay. And as you can see, it is not. So we're going to take our net and cloth, passive collider. Let's try that again. Looks like I'm missing one element here. Let's see. I think I got everything. Oh, there we go. Yep, that's what it was. I forgot to create a, the ball itself, make that a passive glider, okay? And now you can clearly see that the net is responding, and I'll show you again. All right, let's do that again. So just to go through the steps one more time, the board is a passive collider as well as the back plate and the ring. Okay, our net is an end cloth object and this ball is a passive collider as well. Okay, so one more demonstration. And there you go. So that's all there's to it. I'm going to make this file available in the shared folder for my uh, patrons. And if you want to become a patron, you can find details below. And that said, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.